Hello everyone, we're getting together today to tame pattern matches, and stripes in particular. Timeless, stripes are making their way onto catwalks and into closets. Wide or thin, vertical or horizontal, regular or placed, they're everywhere and can be used in an infinite number of ways. Stripe matching can be scary. It's by no means essential, but if you like a little challenge, this video is for you. Nice matchings will give a perfect finish, a detail found on top of the range garments in ready-to-wear and haute couture. If you're patient and meticulous, you'll quickly tame these stripes and even have fun sewing wild variations. In this video, we're going to sew together a sailor-style jersey t-shirt, but it works for all other types of garment. Here we have pants, rompers, dresses, and blouses. Not all stripe matchings are possible, so choose the most visible ones. These are often the following areas. Fronts or backs if there's an opening, button or zipper. Side seams, possibly the sleeve stripes when they are horizontal, with the bust stripes in front, as well as the under sleeves. Finally, in some cases, on the shoulders. If a matching is very visible, but not necessarily feasible, Consider cutting the pieces in the other direction or in the bias to achieve an interesting graphic effect without the hassle of matching. You can make your work in the fabric of your choice, either woven or knitted, bearing in mind that the better the fabric, the easier it will be to match the stripes. It should be noted, however, that lining up the stripes may require a little more fabric as you won't necessarily be able to fit all the pieces as tightly as you would on a plain fabric. So don't hesitate to use a slightly larger coupon than recommended in the pattern. Stripes can be woven, knitted or printed on fabric. In the case of woven or knitted stripes, they should be parallel or perpendicular to the selvage, so there's little chance of distortion. On the other hand, in the case of printed stripes, it's possible that they won't be printed quite straight and therefore won't be quite perpendicular or parallel to the selvage. In such specific cases, we recommend that you set aside the grain line and focus on aligning the stripes so that when the work is finished, you don't end up with crooked stripes that give an odd effect. Here I'm showing you a check pattern, as I didn't have stripes printed at the office, but the principle is the same. Stripes can also be part of the fabric structure, as is the case with corduroys or quilted fabrics, for example. You might not think about it, but all the tips in this video are equally applicable to this type of fabric. The size of the stripes will of course influence the matchings. The larger the stripes, the simpler the matchings. On the other hand, fabrics with very thin stripes known as millerays will be almost impossible to join and not necessarily visible. We start by cutting the fabric. This is where 80% of the success of your matchings depends. No matter how hard you sew, if you don't cut your pieces properly, you'll never get a good matching. Before you start, make sure your fabric is well ironed, as this is the basis for even precise work. We advise you to set up on a large flat surface to position the fabric correctly. The fabric can be presented and folded, and therefore cut in a single layer particularly in the case of asymmetrical pieces. But in this video, we're going to take a look at how to cut on a folded fabric to maintain efficiency while remaining precise. We're going to fold our fabric in half according to the width of our piece. It's best to fold the fabric right sides together, but if the stripes aren't visible on the reverse side, you can also fold the fabric wrong sides together. In special cases, the selvage may be slightly deformed by the fabric's finish, making it virtually impossible to align the selvages. In such cases, you can cut a few centimeters off the selvage to obtain a fabric free of primer and distortion. That's what I'm doing here. Care is taken to position it correctly without distorting it or making false folds. The stripes can then be aligned. Match them up, then pin stripe by stripe to keep everything in place. This is how it looks once the fabric is in place. This step may take a little time, but it's crucial for the rest of the process. Now it's time to place the first piece on the fabric. Start with the front, 
so you're sure to get the placement you want on the most visible part of the garment. We define a key mark on the pattern, which will allow us to align all the pieces in the pattern. In the case of a t-shirt, the ideal position is at the bottom of the om hole, which will allow us to align the front and back, as well as the sleeves. So I place my front in line with the bottom of my om hole on the top of this blue stripe. I pin my pattern to the fabric. The step I'm about to show you is optional, but I like to do it because it allows me to guarantee my matchings and add another control point. I trace on my pattern the extension of the stripes on the side seam. I then place my back piece opposite and extend these marks onto my piece. I use tissue paper, which is semi-transparent, and it's true that it's pretty handy for seeing the stripes underneath. I'd advise you to use transparent paper if you're thinking of making matchings, as it'll make the job easier. I'm also going to try to join my shoulders, so I'll take this opportunity to trace the scratch marks on this part too. I move on to the placement of my back piece. I proceed in the same way as for the front, aligning the bottom of the om hole with the top of a blue stripe. For the back, I also have the mockings I've traced on the pattern, which allow me to check that the joins will be good all along the side seam. Once the piece is in place, I can pin it. The good news is that I can see that the shoulder seams are working well, so I also pay attention to the shoulders when pinning. Let's continue with the sleeve piece. For this example, my sleeve is to be cut at the fold, but of course the principle is the same for a sleeve to be cut flat. Again, I align the bottom of my armhole hole with the top of the blue stripe. Just be sure to check the alignment on both sides of the blue stripe. I pin my piece in place, and now I'm ready to cut. There are no special instructions for cutting, except perhaps to be even more precise than usual, so as not to end up with little millimetres more or less that could gradually shift the stripes. At the workshop, we use the rotary cutter, which we particularly like, but scissors also work very well. I'll also show you the placement for asymmetrical pieces, which are not to be cut at the fold. The procedure is the same, but on unfolded fabric, there's just an extra check to be made to ensure that the stripes are in the same position on one side of the piece as on the other. This happens naturally if the fabric has been placed correctly, but it's a point to bear in mind before cutting. Thanks to rigorous cutting of the garment pieces, most of the work is done. Now we move on to sewing, where we regularly check that the stripes remain aligned. If possible, Plan to overcast the pieces after sewing, to avoid any distortion caused by overcasting. Pinning is the first step, and it's at this stage that we take care to align everything properly. Don't hesitate to use lots of pins, perhaps one for each stripe. Check your work regularly on both sides. If you like, you can also base the seam by hand rather than using pins. Now it's time to sew. If you're using a sewing machine, don't worry. With pinning, the fabric won't move. I stitch my fabric, leaving the pins in place and going slowly over the top. However, if you're using the serger, it can be a little different as you don't necessarily have the same precision as with a sewing machine. You can't keep the darts or pins in place all the way through because of the serger knife. What's more, the top and bottom pieces may be driven slightly differently. These two parameters can result in less precise matchings. The best thing to do is to test on scraps first and adapt the pinning of the pieces if necessary, taking into account the slight offset, or else first stitch on the sewing machine to baste and secure the matchings before stitching on the serger. I'll show you here what kind of offsetting looks like. It's always quite frustrating because the shift is so small, only a few millimeters, but it's enough to be visible. And here's what it looks like when stitched. Matchings are short. You'll find that, with experience, the matchings will get cleaner and cleaner until perhaps they reach perfection. We've seen the case of horizontal stripe matchings on one side, where the stripes are aligned at the selvages. In other, more specific cases, if the stripes or the piece are cut on the bias or in different directions, for example, there's one thing to bear in mind. The pattern is aligned at the seam line, 
not the selvages. It's a detail that makes all the difference. Here I show you a sample where the central stripe is aligned at the selvage. Unfortunately, when sewn at 7mm, the matching is not perfectly aligned. Conversely, on this sample, the center stripe is not aligned at selvage level, but at the stitching line, 7mm from the selvage. You can see that once sewn, the matching is perfect. And there you have it, all our tips for successful matchings. You'll see that you'll get better with time, and that even so, if your matchings aren't quite perfect, it doesn't matter, chances are, you're the only one who can see it. These matching tips can be useful for all types of designs, and nice matchings will give your sewing projects a wow factor. We hope you found this video useful, and please feel free to like and subscribe to our channel, as we regularly post new tutorials. It's up to you now, and see you soon at Ikati.